Hey guys, welcome to Ace Aoshima's Authentic Samurai Channel. I'm your host, Ace Aoshima. And today we'll be going over how to sheathe like a samurai. But we're not going over some any old method of sheathing. We'll be going over a very specific way of sheathing called a special way of sheathing technique called spin sheathing. Now there's many different ways to spin a sword, but there's one specific way that's unique to samurai performance, and that's the one, that's the one I'd like to teach you guys. So without further ado, let's check it out. Okay, so let's begin with regular sheathing method first. Next is spin sheathing. So, how do we do this? Essentially, we're just spinning it around our index finger. Spinning it around our index finger. But that's easier said than done. So we'll break it into steps. And once you learn the individual steps, let's connect it together. So first, so start with drawing your sword, a standard chibuti. From here, move your index finger to the other side of the hilt or the handle. So your index finger on this side, right? Move it to the other side. If you can see now, I'm holding the sword in between my index finger and my middle finger like this. And make sure when you do this, it doesn't go the other way, like this. Blade should facing away from your finger. From here, you just spin it around your index finger. I, the idea is spinning it around your index finger, but that's hard to do just with your finger. So use your wrist. From here, use your wrist and make a half circle. After you make the half circle, open up your palm and let the blade drop towards the ground. I mean, ideally, this would be one fluid motion of spinning, but if I were to actually break it down, from here, use your wrist and just let it drop. Once you let it drop, bring your thumb to the other side of the handle. Thumb to the other side. And once you do this, Use your, uh, move your other three fingers, right, your, index, uh, your pinky, ring finger, and your middle finger to the other side. So now you're sort of pinching the sword like this. Once you pinch the sword, bring the back of this blade to the sheath, and then slide it in. Again, draw, right, get in your stance. First, shake off the blood, bring your index finger to the other side of the sword, or the handle, use your wrist to make a half circle, open up the palm to drop it, drop the blade to the ground, move your thumb, move your other three fingers when you're pinching, and then bring the back of the blade to the sheath and slide it in. So once you get a hang of this, you sort of put everything together, right? Draw, get in your stance. Right, imagine you killed your opponent. Standard blood uh, chibuti, shaking off the blood. And then when you move your index finger to the other side, it's sort of difficult to do this. It helps if you bring your arm and sort of curve it in a little bit. Curve it in and move the finger, so it's easier. And then use your, your wrist to make a half circle. At the same time, just sort of let it go, right? Instead of one, two, make that one fluid motion. And when you open up the palm, don't go all the way like this, but open it up like that. Does that make sense? Use the thrust of your wrist, and then let the blade just make it turn itself but keep the palm thumb on this side. 
right? Before, the pop, this thumb was on this side, this side of the grip handle. But if you just use the thrust, let it fall, the thumb is already on this side, this side of the grip, which means I don't need to bring it over. That step is already canceled, right? Instead of one, two, three, it's going to be one, two, and the three, three is already done. From here, bring out the other three fingers and then bring it back into your sheet. So the, the flowy, fluid version is Chibiri. Turn and bring the index finger over. Use your wrist as the momentum and let it flop. Finger already here. And the other three fingers. So the finished version would look like this. And there it is. And one last thing I want to share with you guys is that the sword we use for performance is called a takemitsu. Take means bamboo, mitsu means light, which in turn means like, a, like the shininess of the glistening of the blade. So the word takemitsu means a bamboo blade, which means a bamboo sword. I mean, unfortunately, we don't use bamboo and we use a wooden sword because bamboo take, costs a little bit more to produce. But the whole point is that it's very light. See? So you see this length, right? If this was real metal, it'll be a lot more heavier, but since it's made of wood, right? This part's made of wood, it's very light. <clears throat> right? And uh, if you can see over here, you can probably tell that uh, it's not made of real metal. Or maybe this way is easier to understand. Uh, see this part? Oh, if you can get the focus there, but see, you can see that there's a silver tape or the metal tape that I put on over the wooden blade that's sort of coming off right now. And if you can see this part is actual real wood. I mean, I've been using this for a while, so uh, it's not perfectly done anymore, but if it's like a performance, I would take it off and renew it. Right, so because this is very light, it's easy for us to, you know, spin and cheat. And this takemitsu comes from a theatrical performance. You know, theatrical performances happened back in the day when samurais were still around, and they were using a wooden sword instead of a metal sword for safety purposes, right? Because if you use a metal sword and have an accident, it's dangerous. But with a wooden sword, it's like a prop, it's more safer. And on theater, everything has to be bigger to make an impression, right? So that's where the spin chi thing came from, because they were already using a metal, a wooden sword, which allowed them to, you know, make it flashier and make it bigger. So why, the reason why I'm saying this is because I want you guys to understand that uh, this spin thing is not a martial art technique. It's a theatrical gimmick. Even today, in movies and uh, real, real theatrical performances, we use this wooden blade instead of a metal blade. I mean, uh, specifically talking about uh, movies, if it's a close-up, we would have a metal sword. So metal blade. So oftentimes we would have like two or three versions of the same sword depending on which frame or which size of what we're using for. Like if it's for action scene, it might be what would it? If it's a close-up for like, you know, posing and stuff, it might be a metal blade, right? I mean, and it could be made of rubber for different purposes too. But still, even today, the main one is this wooden one. And so I want you guys to know that it's a theatrical gimmick that came from a very light blade. So my suggestion to you guys is that if you're gonna practice at home, I suggest you try using something light to begin with, like an umbrella or something, you know? Use an umbrella and practice, and if you have a wooden sword or very light sword, like a single hand rapier or something, then you can do it with that. And if you do have a metal blade katana at home, and if you really wanna use it and try it, um, you can, of course. I mean, it's not impossible. I can do it with a metal blade. But I want you guys to know that this was designed. This whole technique was designed based on using a wooden light sword. So there's no pressure to. Uh, there's no pressure for you to actually be able to do it with a metal sword. All right. Okay. So I hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll see you guys next time.